Hello and welcome to the September edition of Starry Sky News. In these videos I look to talk about all of the latest astrophotography equipment coming to the market. I talk about good astrophotography targets in the Northern Hemisphere that you can photograph this coming month and along with anything else in between that I fancy talking about as well. So my name is Nick, let's jump right into it with the latest astrophotography equipment. I've got two really great bits of equipment to talk about this month, I'm very excited. So the first one is the Optolong L Ultimate dual narrowband filter. Now a lot of you will know about this already or a lot of you will already be familiar with the Optolong L Enhance and the Optolong L Extreme. They're both filters that I already own and I think they are absolutely brilliant for isolating the right wavelengths for emission nebulae. Optolong have now gone one step further and they have created a filter that is going to have three nanometer band passes at hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. So that's the red and blue part of the visible light spectrum. This is really going to isolate isolate those emission nebulae wavelengths for three nanometer band passes. I think that's pretty astonishing. And it will also block out all of the light pollution so you'll be presented with a much darker sky in your individual subs and therefore the final stack should be of much better quality. Optolong say that this filter is optimized in halo performance. Now if you've seen my Optolong L Extreme review and if you haven't I will leave a link to that in the description down below then you'll know that my complaint about that filter was that it did produce um, halos in some of my astrophotography pictures but not all. Optolong are saying that this should not be a problem for the L Ultimate. I'll be interested to see if that is the case in reality, they recommend using the L Ultimate from F4 onwards. So that is from F4 down to say 5.6, 6.3, etc. Anything above 3.8 and they say you might start to see halos. So those faster systems may produce halos on the brighter stars. I really do hope that that is true, but only time will tell. As of recording, the Optolong L Ultimate is only available as a two inch mounted filter and is currently priced at 349 of your finest English pounds. However, if you order it from First Light Optics before midnight on the 20th of September, then you can save £40, and I think that is not to be sniffed at, so go and check that out. I will leave a link to that in the description down below. Shipping is expected to start from mid to late September. Best of luck if you're ordering one. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. All right, the next one is a big one. ZWO have announced a new DSO cooled camera. That's Deep Sky Object cooled camera. And that is the ASI 461 MM Pro, the MM being a mono camera, of course. All right, let me hit you with some numbers. It has the Sony IMX 461 3.4 inch sensor. That's 44 mil by 33 mil sensor with a resolution of 11, 656 by 8750. It has 100 megapixels. 256 meg of DDR3 RAM buffer, 16-bit ADC. Whew. Oh, that was a lot to get out. It also has no amp glow, much like my own 533. Uh, no amp glow is fantastic. And ZWO are also boasting that it will have very low read noise and zero visible fixed pattern noise. At time of recording, ZWO's website says it may be ready for shipping from late September. Only time will tell, of course. And it is available to you at the low, low price of, ah, um, $14,800. Uh, yeah, put me down for two. Or maybe it's so overpriced because they're finally going to include a power supply with each camera. Let's just have a look. Oh, no, they're not going to do that either. I jest, of course, this camera sounds absolutely insane. I will never be able to afford to own one, but that's okay. It's not aimed at me. It's aimed at professionals with, you know, tens of thousands of pounds worth of astrophotography equipment sitting in a remote observatory somewhere. It sounds amazing. It looks incredible. Good luck to anyone who is buying one. I hope you enjoy it. All right, moving on to James Webb Space Telescope news. That's right. You can't get through a Starry Sky News edition without talking about James Webb Space Telescope at the minute. JWST continues to absolutely smash it out of the park with its new images that it's releasing every month. Now, I'm not going to be going into the deep scientific technical knowledge of these images and everything that you're seeing in them because, well, quite frankly, 
I'm too stupid. However, if you're someone that has a passion for learning about science and other STEM topics, then you'll want to check out the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app that teaches you about all kinds of STEM topics from beginner all the way up to advanced and they have thousands of lessons available with new content being added all the time. I learn best by doing, for me it's the best way to learn and so far I have been enjoying the scientific thinking and astrophysics courses and I think they all resonate with you too. And for me learning about astrophysics will help me make much better videos so that I can talk to you about the scientific things in the images that we're seeing and I love how interactive all of the lessons are. I'm able to fit Brilliant into my life by dedicating just 30 minutes each day to it, and it's amazing how much I've learned so far. I'm actually starting to understand some of the science behind the galaxies and nebulae that I've been photographing for several years now. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash astroexploring, or use the link in the description down below. The first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual subscription plan. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. All right, back to JWST images. This is an image of the Cartwheel Galaxy. Looks all right, doesn't it? The Cartwheel Galaxy is 500 million light years away. It was taken with JWST's primary imager, the Near Infrared Cam, which reveals more stars than what would be available in visible light. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison of JWST versus Hubble, just so that you can see the difference that has been made in the last 30 years of technology. I've stared at this picture for a very long time, over several days, and I could just keep looking at it. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. I could go on about it forever. However, I want to show you this picture of Jupiter as well. Storms, winds, auroras, extreme temperature, you name it, Jupiter's got it, and this image captures it all. And this image even shows off Jupiter's rings as well, and that is absolutely incredible. I have never seen an image like this before. This image was also captured using the near-infrared camera, which has three infrared filters, and what they do is they take the light from the three filters and they map it to the visible spectrum, for our viewing pleasure. And they do that for all of the images because obviously our eyes can't see infrared light. All right, moving on to my top three astrophotography targets for September in the Northern Hemisphere. As usual, I have picked these based on them being available to any focal length, whether you're using a small camera lens on a star tracker or just a static tripod, all the way up to a big fancy telescope on a tracking mount like you see in my videos. The first one is the Hart Nebula IC1805. It's a target I return to year after year. September is a great time to start imaging the Hart Nebula, not forgetting the Fish Head Nebula at the bottom of course, which I think makes this target look like something else, but we'll leave that up to your imagination. And if you have the right setup, you can also fit the next target into the field of view, which is the Sol Nebula. The Hart and Sol Nebula go really well together. If you're using something like a full frame camera and a William Optics Red Cat or a Samyang 135mm lens, something along those lines, then you can get both targets in the same field of view and they look absolutely stunning together. Or of course if you've got a longer focal length you could just do it as a mosaic instead. I have to say the Sol Nebula as one isolated deep sky object isn't actually my favourite target, but I include it in this list simply because I think capturing it along with the Heart Nebula is an absolutely incredible thing to do. And you'll find both the Heart and Sol Nebula in the constellation of Cassiopeia. All right, moving on to target number three, which is the Andromeda Galaxy, which is obviously located in the constellation of Andromeda. It's a relatively easy target to find because under really dark skies, it's actually visible to the naked eye. So you don't necessarily need a big fancy go-to mount to be able to find it. And of course, with the Andromeda Galaxy being so massive and relatively close to us, in galactic terms at least, then it is pretty easy to find even if you can't see it. And some little imaging tips on photographing the Andromeda Galaxy. If you don't want to blow out the core, then what you can do is blend in some shorter, say, 30 second exposures with your longer three minute exposures. That will give you a nice composition of not blowing out the core in the center, but also having your longer exposures to capture the really fine detail in the dust lanes on the outer edges of the galaxy. Or you could also isolate the core in a post-processing program such as Photoshop and create a layer mask so that you can just apply some curved stretches to the rest of the galaxy and leave the core alone and then you're not going to blow it out. And finally let's check in for the weather for this month. Oh yeah it's going to be cloudy 
every single night. That's cool. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, all the normal YouTube-y things, etc. Do be sure to check out the link down below for Brilliant, and remember that the first 200 people will get 20% off an annual subscription plan. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video, and thanks so much to you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.